Affinity Publisher gives you powerful tools for creating your own table of contents. In this video, we'll go over all the steps for making your own table of contents, and then how you can adjust your table of contents to make it look exactly how you want. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link to this file in the video description. We'll get started by taking a little tour of this document. So you can see we have this front cover page. And then as we go down through the document, I've included a place where we'll put our table of contents. Down here, I have introduction pages, which include a few little subheadings. Then we have main body text pages with a few more subheadings. And then one last section called Conclusion with more subheadings. And then a back cover. To create a table of contents with our main headings and our subheadings, we need to turn these headings into text styles. To do that, I'll come back up to our first page that has text. Then I'll double click to highlight this text, and then press on Text Styles over here by the Layers panel. What we're about to do is assign this text a text style, and we'll assign the same text style to all of the other main headings in our document. That way, when we're making our table of contents, it's a lot easier to automatically make a table of contents by telling it to make it out of this text style. So to get started, I'll come down to where it says Heading 1, and then press right here next to it. Then I'll press Update Heading 1. You can see that Heading 1 has been updated, and looks like it has the same font as this title that we selected. When we updated Heading 1, it took on all of the characteristics of this heading, including the font, size, alignment, everything that we did to this text has now been applied to Heading 1. Now, with this still selected, I'm going to press on Heading 1 to assign Heading 1 to this title. Then I'll scroll down I'll double click in here to select main text and then press heading 1 to assign this text heading 1. And I'll do the same for our conclusion. I'll click in it, then double click to select it and then press heading 1 to assign heading 1 to it. Next, I'm going to give all of these subheadings heading 2. To do this, I'll come up to the top, back to pages 4 and 5, and then I'll select this subheading. With this subheading selected, and with its font and everything looking just how we want it, I can come to Heading 2, click here, and then press Update Heading 2. Heading 2 has now been updated with the font, font size, and alignment. And now I can press on Heading 2 to assign this subheading to Heading 2. I'm going to continue to do this throughout the rest of our document by clicking on our subheadings to select them and then assigning them Heading 2. I've now completed adding all of the subheadings to the Heading 2 category. Before we make our table of contents, I want to show you something cool that we can do with our text styles. To show you, I'm going to come up to a page that has more subheadings applied to it, like this one. This one has two Heading 2s applied to it. I'm going to show you that you can press here on Heading 2, then, 
you can press Edit Heading 2, which brings up this box where you can change anything about Heading 2, and everything that has Heading 2 applied to it will be updated. This is super useful if you ever decide to go with a different font type for a certain heading. In this case, I could come to Color and Decoration and change our text fill color. And all of the text that has heading to applied to it will automatically update in color. I'm going to turn it back to black for now and then press OK. Now that we have our text assigned to different text styles, we can make our table of contents. I'll come up to pages 2 and 3. And then here where it says this is where the contents will go. <laughs> I'll go ahead and highlight that and then press delete. And then I can insert a table of contents by coming to the top of the screen to text, then come down to table of contents and press insert table of contents. We now have this table of contents dialog box and in here we can adjust how our table of contents looks. You can see over here that our table of contents includes our main heading 1, the introduction, main text, and conclusion, and the subheadings that we created. If we ever didn't want the subheadings included, we could come over here and uncheck heading 2, and now we just have the main titles appearing. I'm going to check back on Heading 2. And now I'm going to show you a way that you can edit your table of contents to make it look exactly how you want. The first thing you can do to edit this table of contents is you can uncheck this box right here to take the page numbers off of the Heading 1 entries. The next thing you can do to edit your table of contents is actually to come back over here to our text styles and then we can change our table of content styles for the different headings that we're using. If I edit this text style, we'll be editing the heading 1 entries. So I'll press on this box here and then press edit table of contents 1 heading 1. I can move this box so I can see this a little bit better. And now I can change whatever I want within this dialog box. As you go down this side, you can see that you can click on these options and change things about how our text is appearing. For example, I could increase this font size to make it a little clearer that this is the main title. I can also change the font type if I wanted to. Then, when you're liking how this is looking, you can press OK. I'm now going to edit Table of Contents Heading 2 by clicking on this button and then pressing Edit Table of Contents 1 Heading 2. Now, I can edit how these are appearing in our Table of Contents. We can do the same thing that we did before, editing the fonts, and sizes, the colors, we can edit just about anything. But something that I want to edit right now is under the tab stop section. This is where we can add in the dot 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 <laughs> that a lot of table of contents have to connect the title to the page number. To do this, I'll come over to this button right here. And instead of having the tab stop leader set to none, we'll change it to this dot. Now you can see that we have dots connecting the titles to the page numbers. This is just one of the many options that we have to change inside of this dialog box. Feel free to continue exploring this dialog box to make this table of contents really look the way that you want. I just wanted to show you this tab stop section because it took me a while to figure out this part of table of contents. I'll go ahead and press OK. 
and show you something that you might encounter while making a table of contents for your documents. I'm going to return to our Pages panel over here, and then I'm going to add a few pages. To do this, I'll right click on this page and then press Add Pages. Now, I'll make sure that I'm adding a certain number of pages. Let's say we'll add four pages after page three. Then I'll press OK. And you can see we now have some blank pages inserted. If we go back to our table of contents, we can see that it still says page five is where we have commencement located. If I go down to page 5, that's not where commencement is. Commencement is actually on page 9. To update our table of contents, all we need to do is select it, then come to the top of the screen to text, Table of Contents, Update Table of Contents. When I press this button, you'll see the page numbers change so that they're updated with these new additional pages. Because we added text styles, we're able to quickly make a table of contents and update it if any of our different titles and headings move pages along our process of editing our document. I just want to give you one more tip for table of contents because it's a problem that I've run into a few times. When you're creating your titles for your documents, sometimes if you use the artistic text tool, things can get a little messed up in the table of contents. I made this title using the artistic text tool, as you can see, because it's now selected. And I'm going to show you the problem that I run into sometimes. If I have a title that runs onto two lines, I'm just going to highlight all of this if I can. There we go. And apply heading 1 to it. Alright. If I have a title that runs onto two lines, and then go back to my table of contents, and then update my table of contents since I just changed something about it, you can see that this title appears on two lines as if it's two separate titles even if I want it to all be together. This is a problem unique to the artistic text tool, so if you run into this problem, the way you can fix it is to make sure that you've written this text inside a frame text box. So I'm going to come back down and then click and drag with the frame text tool. We're going to type out introduction to the book. And now I'm going to highlight this text and apply heading 1 to it. With the frame text tool, when you adjust the size of the frame text box, it can push your title onto two lines without you needing to press return or enter to get the text onto two lines. Using the artistic text tool, if I adjust this, it will just stretch out the text. Because of this, if I ever want something to be on two lines with an artistic text tool box, I need to press enter or return, which is where this problem comes from. I'm going to select the move tool, and with this artistic text box selected, I'll press delete on my keyboard. And now we have this frame text box as our new title to this section. I'll come up to our table of contents select it, and then come up and update our table of contents. You can see when I press update table of contents that instead of introduction and to the book being on two separate lines as if they're two separate entries, now they're connected all on one line because they're being considered as the same part of the title. This is just one problem that I've run into with table of contents, so if you run into this problem, 
make sure that you're using a frame text tool to keep your text all together as if it's all one title. By using text styles and the frame text tool, you can create a beautiful automatic table of contents that can be updated as you work. If you liked learning how to make your own table of contents, then you'll love our complete beginner's guide to Affinity Publisher, which I'll have linked in the video description. This course is chock full of video tutorials and practical examples that you can use to jumpstart your Affinity Publisher skills. I can't wait to see you in the course.